What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Trailer Time. Mohit and Jamel with another trailer review roundup. Three new trailers. Really good ones, I might add. We're going to do The Matrix Resurrections. Hype. We've been hyped since 1999. Don't look up. Enough said. And last night in Soho, it might be a su surprise sleeper hit. But before we get into all these, sink our teeth into all these great trailers, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon. Without further ado, let's get into them. Let's start with the one we've been waiting for since we were four years old. The Matrix Resurrections, Matrix 4, the sequel we've all been waiting for. The sequel we needed forever. I mean, <laughs> it looks great. I'm just going to say that. It looks like very similar to the original Matrix, the one that everyone loved. Bringing it into, you know, this year with the special effects. Same kind of like fighting style, same kind of like movement, environment, and vibes. Damn, can't wait! It's gonna, can't wait to watch it with my dad. Like, it's gonna be so, it's gonna be so endearing. Oh, that's gonna be good, dude. That's gonna yeah. be like full circle, like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to share it. yeah. I'm glad you got to just share that with him. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if my parents are like big matrix people. What I will say is, I got tons of flashbacks watching it from when I was in philosophy club in middle school. <laughs> yeah, I was in philosophy club in middle school. I we just used to watch like- a philosophy club. I know, right? Well, we had, we like formed it in my civics wow. class. It was like this whole thing. But we yeah. used to just watch like thought provoking, like interesting movies and stuff. Interesting. Um, like Pleasantville, we watched Pleasantville like a hundred times. Um, yeah. And then you guys are the Matrix beyond your like years. a big one. I know, right? See, we're already doing all that critical thinking before. Oh yeah, <laughs> people wrote all them books. <laughs> but but I, so I got a ton of nostalgia from that. What I will say is like I'm very undecided on how I feel about like the movie and like, what's gonna happen. Like I I know it's gonna be good. I don't think that this these people would sign up for it if it wasn't True. gonna be good. Oh yeah yeah. Um, you, know, you, do you think Keanu Reeves would sign up for some random Matrix no. movie that was just like whatever? No, not at he all. He did that not two. He did that two times and learned his lesson. Not at all. I think they purposely like hit a bunch of the uh, like cool effects that we're gonna see coming out of like the transposition between like the Matrix and like the real world. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I would have liked to see more of that in a trail. Mm -hmm. Like it would have got me more excited. I feel like there's uh, a lot of like powers being used from all the characters, especially from Neo. Remember he like moves that missile around like from one helicopter yeah, yeah, yeah. straight into the next. Maybe it was just like hard to digest. Like there wasn't like a very clear. It was very like, trippy. There, there wasn't a lot of clear. Very mm -hmm. trippy, throwing a lot of vi uh, visual lot stimulation of, all at once. Yeah, a lot of visuals, yeah. right. Um, got a new Morpheus, that's cool. I, yeah, I didn't, Morpheus. I'm interested to see how that... Yeah. yeah. I think Yaya yeah, 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 Abdul-Mateen II that. is the perfect guy to play young Morpheus. He really is. And like when he I first saw him, I was like, wait, what's he doing in here? Is he a different person? Yeah. As soon as he had the small glasses. glasses. <laughs> exactly. He's like, bro, he's perfect. <laughs> I saw them little glasses. I was yeah, like, yeah, perfect, he's more perfect. Famous. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, I can't wait. I'm, I'm pumped, man. Like, I, but I, I will say this, like Keanu Reeves is a different person, like as an actor, as a human being. Yeah. It's yeah. really like all these things. He's so. bringing some John, Lo John Wick looks and I think flavors into his role as neo because he looks like a wounded soldier you know looks like he's addicted to the blue pills trying to keep himself within like the the matrix kind of in his real world you know so there's that layer and i think that's definitely something that has come from his you know growth from the first matrix up until now so that might i think that's a really good angle to throw in you know his relationship with trinity also seems like it's going to be a foundational piece for the movie trying to get her back trying to you know keep her alive and all that stuff we're getting a new agent not Agent Smith, apparently Agent Johnson, who I think will pale in comparison to Agent Smith. Fun fact, fun fact. That teacher, that chaperone, that my philosophy club, shout out to Mr. Coates, uh, he named his daughter Trinity. After the Matrix? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how big wow. of a fan. No so wonder they, you, saw, him, you yeah. saw it that young. So many times. Um, how, many, how many of the OG characters other than Keanu and Trinity and... And I guess Morpheus, in a way, or you think will make a return? I think all of them. I think what they'll do is they'll have them, whatever the climax is, like the climaxing conflict, mm -hmm. like they'll all show up to help Neo, mm -hmm. like complete the mission or, or, or do whatever. Now, who, do you, 
what else is left for them to do? They Yeah, who do you think the villain is? Like before it was like the Agent Smith program and they got rid of him. So like if the villain is just Agent Johnson, I feel like that's kind of kind of a lame lame villain to, you know, bring bring a bring a movie back for. You know what I mean? Why would you bring a cast back for just the rehash? Yeah, yeah that's true. What if so they, they held just that close like to chest, maybe that's beneficial. I mean maybe. I was gonna say maybe like they go macro and the matrix itself and that the barrier between like reality and the dream world is broken down yeah for like so like they're colliding yeah 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 that would be sick that would be a good way to end it that would be sick so that luckily this is only the first trailer they didn't save as a teaser trailer or not so we just have to take a normal trailer face value so they hit the plot from us pretty well with this trailer, so being able to talk about these questions I think is really important, trying to dissect it, you know, amongst yourselves is part of this trailer's job, and I think it did that pretty well. Yeah, totally, totally. So, uh, what are you gonna rate this, dude? This is a big one, this is The Matrix, fam. Four out of five for me. I would have a little emotional bias towards this, because this is like the, the, the sequel for The Matrix that I've wanted for so long, you know? Yeah, totally, totally. I, I gotta be honest, bro. I gotta keep it a buck. I'm gonna give it a three out of five. I don't like it as a trailer, to be honest. Like, just as a trailer. Deep, Maybe that's just deep. me having too much like hype and like hella yeah, expectations. Yeah. And I have so many. Like, I want to know what, like, what's good. Like, our we, bro, we've been immersed in the Matrix universe for like 30 years now. Yeah. I know. Um, it's a it's a cool trailer. I just yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just wanted. To I think if you have like an emo, if you have like such a strong connection to something like this, either goes like whatever you get, you're gonna love. But yeah. If, or you can like, I deserve more because I've waited so long and I've been a part of this for so long. You know what I mean? Those I feel like those are the two reactions people tend to have. Totally, totally. All right, let's move on to the next trailer. Don't Look Up, directed by Adam McKay, starring everyone? Everybody. Like Oscar or something? <laughs> Literally everyone? In the entire- in all of Hollywood? I can't- like, we even have to sit here for a separate video just to read the entire cast list. That's how long and stacked it is. Bro, deep. Remember I was like, oh yeah, um, No Time to Die might have the best cast of all time? Yeah. I think, that's that exactly what I was thinking. Bro. We've said this so many times here on this channel, so many trailers have had stacked cast, best cast of all time. I feel like that's like a theme for 2021 or something. All these movies coming out have like insane casts that are so strong. Like deep, bro. And then they're, they're coming Not they're coming in hot. You know why? Because cause all these people wanted to work with each other this whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is like probably the first time in the past like year or two where they really had like were able to. And like in person, no protocols and none of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's true. So... I mean, dude, Jonah and Leo, like... Oh, my God. I can't wait. That They're literally two of... That, they have such a great dynamic ever since The Wolf of Wall Street. They're my favorite duo to see on screen. No no question. So funny. They just work, the, so work off each other so well. One thing I love about this trailer, you, did, you posted on Twitter, I posted on Instagram, that it really doesn't give you the plot until the end, which is great because it really lets the characters themselves shine. Because that is what is going to really be the drawing aspect of this movie, I think. The plot is interesting, funny, very, you know, resonant, resonant with the times. I think yeah. what Adam McKay has always done in all of his movies is, like, give us such amazing characters. And the plot's kind of secondary. You know, let's look at the Anchorman. Literally, there, I don't want to say Anchorman doesn't have a plot, but Ron Burgundy, Brian Fantana, B Brick, yeah. whatever. They Those build it out of the characters. Exactly. Yeah. Even in even in Vice, you know, you have Christian Bale as the vice president, who is the character that's kind of leading this. Even the big short, the story is interesting, but these characters make it so that you move the story forward, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. Adam McKay is a very very good director. Um, I'm, I love that he's kind of gearing towards his drama comedy drama um, space because I think he's been killing it. It's gonna be great. Leo, Jennifer Lawrence, Jonah Hill, Meryl Streep. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence so and Meryl Streep, her. heavy hitters, fam. Heavy How hitters. did they get these people in Kid this Kenny and Ariana Timothy. Grande. Uh, what? Yeah. Timothy Chalamet. Mark Rylance. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting everybody. I don't... 
But I, again, and if we talk about the plot too, I think it's gonna it's a hilarious just like plot to even dive into. These two low level astronomers are trying to warn everyone about this asteroid that's about to hit, and it seems like no one's taking them seriously, which I love. I love. And it the seems idea like Jennifer Lawrence has her iconic snarkiness that we've come to know and love about her just from that one scene in the restaurant. I can't wait. Oh my god, this is gonna be an ep- This is gonna be a great movie to watch. I think. Also, opening with like I like I said, like I love Leo stressed out. Like opening yeah. with him freaking hyperventilating. I know. Yes. Perfect. There you go. Like you, he comes off the character. You already are kind of invested in what this guy's deal is. He just does a great job, and it's a teaser trailer, so it does a really good job. It explains the plot. It gives you a lot of insight into characters. So I think it's a really really effective trailer in that way. Dope. Same. What? Same. I'm gonna rate it. Five out of five? Wow, five out of five. Loved okay. it. Loved I'm gonna it. give it a four and a half out of five. Five out of five, very interesting. I mean, I, I couldn't think, I can't think of anything bad about it. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. You're like, it's perfect, perfect way yeah, to tease us. I'm gonna do four out of five, four and a half out of five. All right, last trailer of the day. We have Edgar Wright's next movie. He's been hibernating for a while, coming out hard with this movie, Last Night in Soho. This is the official trailer. We got the teaser trailer a couple months back. Um, let me read. Eloise, a young woman with a passion for fashion, mysteriously finds herself transported back to 1960s London, where she enters the body of her idol named Sandy. And while she enters a romantic relationship, she begins to realize the, glimmer, the glittering times of 1960s London is not what it appears to be, and everything falls apart with some shady and horrifying consequences. So if you watch this trailer, you'll, you'll, you'll realize that it's about kind of like a time-traveling murder mystery thriller. It's not a mystery, it's a murder thriller movie. And I think that's kind of a departure from what Edgar has given us so far, and I think he'll be really good at it because he's always been one to dive into kind of new genres every now and then and put his best foot forward. I think we'll get two great performances from the two female leads, Thomas and McKenzie and Anya Taylor-Joy. They've literally been, you know, going from strength to strength in these past couple of years. The trailer itself, it was playing a weird line between thriller and horror. I can't. I know horror is the wrong word because there's no like supernatural elements, but it was giving us kind of the horror slasher kind of vibes, you know. But I think that might have been just me, my misinterpreting it. What do you think? No, I think it was full horror because yeah. the way the only reason I say that is because they do like a very clear shift from mm-hmm. like happy dream yeah. world to like yep. awful death, like. Whatever. Right, right, but right. it is also kind of like this detective murder mystery yeah. um, kind of thing, which I think is super interesting. And I didn't realize that from the original trailer, trailer. that came out first. Original. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm actually super excited about that fact because I didn't realize that was a thing. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm more excited for the thriller part of it than the horror part. That's why when it was playing that weird line, I was like, mm, I was not really into it. Because the, the the trailer that came before, the teaser trailer, you could tell it was going to be like a psychological thriller without kind of yeah. like, or the horror aspect. So that's why I like that trailer more than this one, personally. I don't know. This one made me made it more interesting because... I, okay, it's like when someone gives you an uh, empty um, or like a completely brand new puzzle. And you're like, yeah, I'll get to this. This is... Cool. Okay. Someone gives you like a half finished one. Uh-huh. You're like, wait, what goes here? Wait, what goes here? What goes here? Like, and let me just like put it together. That was like how I felt about this because that's I was like, wait, good, that's a who's great this analogy. guy? Like, wait, maybe oh, he did it. Like, how did she yeah. die? Like, and that kind of like helped me get excited about it. Plus, I think uh-huh. the concept is just, like so dope. We talked about this before about how an anime where you're like really touching with Tokyo Avengers and Erase, we're like touching on this whole like. Time travel, travel murder back mystery. To solve murder. Yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I've been waiting for something like this because yeah, I fair. thoroughly enjoy that concept that I've, that's come about in anime. Fair enough. So, since they like, kind of give away the killer in the trailer, doesn't that kind of ruin the whole plot of the movie? Is that how it felt for me? Hmm. Uh, not really. Like, you think, it, you think it's a red herring, a misdirect? Yeah, because there's the probably because if they were yeah, because the way that they, they framed it in the trailer, if they were gonna give us all that stuff, 
bro like there's probably yeah. so much more that they didn't reveal or like so many yeah. twists this is probably like a multiple t- big twist type movie there's probably got, like three or four yeah. big ones that yeah spread out yeah edgar wright's too smart of a, a writer and a creative to kind of give away that much right away so i can see that there being a bit a twist for sure especially if you like designate your movie as a psychological thriller like a twist or like something you weren't expecting is kind of a must like you need it to really throw you like keep you at the edge of your seats and throw you off the seat you know what i mean uh yeah no 100 percent. were you also uh yeah that, that's actually a really good point were you also thrown off by the solo thing because bro i thought this was in new york the whole time like, Garrett, I-, I thought it was new york too <laughs> But the original Soho was from London. All the areas yeah, in London are from so are fr- all the areas in New York from London. Chelsea, London. Yep. East, I think there's a village or two in London. Manchester, London. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, I know. I totally thought it was New York. I'm gonna be honest, but that's because we didn't hear any like dialogue in the original trailer. Yeah, that's. I was like, wait, they're British? What's going on? Yeah, here? I was like, what? Bre- I mean, it kind of works in fashion. If it was in New York, it would have made sense. If it was in London, it you know, obviously makes sense too. But again, good Mr. Ed. It also kind of makes sense because Edgar Wright is also British. So. Oh, okay, okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Sorry. yeah, makes sense. But that was that was a little like, oh, okay, I know that. And yeah, fair enough. We <laughs> caught us on that one. We caught us on that one. But all right, before we get into the ratings, I just want to say don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Again, hit the bell icon. There's so many great trailers and movies coming out. We're going to talk about all of them. Hit the bell icon, get the notifications when those videos come out. Now, what is your rating for this trailer? Um, these are this is really high, man. These past two videos we've been we've been reviewing these trailers, these roundups, bro. We've been yeah. getting some gas. Um, we have. Well, Hollywood, have Hollywood just kicking them out right at one of the. Would you say sorry? Cut off. Cut you off. No, you're good. You're good. I'm gonna have to go. Um, I'm gonna have to go four out of five. Fair. That's fair. I, I'm gonna have to go three out of five. It, it really didn't play every note for me, you know. Obviously, I, I can expect the, the the killer to be a mystery that we get in the trailer, but um, I thought it was there's much more suspense in the teaser trailer, and that's the kind of stuff I look for in a thriller or horror, whatever this is gonna be. This is gonna be three of three out of five for me, but I can respect a four. I can see where it's coming from. Um, there you have it, everyone. The our reviews and thoughts for the trailers to Matrix Resurrections. Don't look up the the latest movie we say has a star-studded cast. There's probably going to be another one down the line before you know it. And the last night in Soho, Soho, London, not Soho, New York, as we found out. But thank you for tuning in. Let us know what you thought about the trailers and your ratings for the trailers in the comments below. And don't forget to catch us again next week when we talk about all things trailers. Peace.